I'm a fan of Transformers, and if you didn't think it could get any worse than Age of Extinction, you got another thing coming. But I'm not going to get mad about it, though. Hey everybody, what's going on? Today we're going to be talking about Transformers The Last Night. And you know what? You knew this movie was going to suck. And if it was good, I was going to love to be surprised. But you knew it was going to suck and I didn't even feel like writing a review for it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about this movie as a movie and I'm going to talk about this movie as a fan. First things first, you know, a movie called Transformers should really have a lot of Transformers in it, especially by a fifth movie. But you know, honestly, about three fourths of this movie is about the human characters. You know, if they if there was interesting robots and interesting humans, this might be a okay thing. But then again, it's a Transformers movie, and it should be about Transformers, and the human characters aren't that interesting anyway. So if you're expecting to see a lot of Transformers in your Transformers movie, well, you know, you're not gonna. Any attempts at humor in this movie is just awful. None of the jokes land. I mean, none it's just and it tries so hard to be funny little quippy one-liners they have a stupid comic relief character that you think they're going to kill off again uh they don't uh they make a joke about it you know because we all know tj miller got wasted and even he wasn't that funny in the last movie uh you know and none of the action's any good you know you've seen the trailers you've probably seen the best of the action and really You've pretty much seen it all in this series anyway. They haven't offered anything new since, honestly, maybe the first one. Of course, there's a lazy and stupid love story that you're forced to endure the entire movie. There's jokes about it. Oh, Marky Mark, you should have a girlfriend. And then the the main girl, oh, you should have a boyfriend. And you know, of course, they're going to get together. And it's just dumb. There's not much more I can say about it. It's just forced and lazy. This movie is boring so boring it's so long it feels so long and it's just straight up dead boring even the action stuff doesn't make it exciting there's one scene i liked and i'll talk about it a little bit later but this movie as a whole i mean it's just so much setup so much exposition especially from anthony hopkins who by the way he tries to be so cool in this and make cool remarks and he just I don't even, he even admitted he didn't even understand the movie and didn't know what he was doing uh, when talking about it. And, you know, this movie is just so much set up, so much set up, so much set up, and the payoff is nothing uh, except maybe a tease for the next movie. And, oh, yeah, we'll get to that, too. Uh, the, I'll talk about it, that later. Uh, yeah, this movie, honestly, is there to set up uh, one movie or set up two different movies. Uh, one is the next movie, which is the Bumblebee movie, and one the next one we'll talk about in a bit. Let's talk a little bit about characters. Um, characters are introduced in this and almost forgotten for the rest of the story. Um, and then they're brought back for important moments. And that's just annoying that it's like, oh yeah, I've, it's like you almost forget a character's in it. Uh, one of the main girls, she's introduced at the first And oh boy, we're going to talk about her in a second. Um, She's introduced and then uh, they kind of forget about her for most of the movie. And then she comes back and has one important scene. And yay, she's important to the plot. Um, You know, Marky Mark's character is Marky Mark from the last movie. And uh, the, the main scientist girls just get another main scientist person. And she's important. And we're supposed to care about these characters. And they, they just don't care. They're uninteresting, they're lazy, they're boring. Uh, And once again, this is a movie about Transformers. Can we have some more Transformers, not more boring human characters? Okay, Michael Bay, um, get this through your head. Look, I'm no SJW or anything, you know. I like beautiful women as much as any heterosexual male does. Um, But I like characters first. I like good characters first. And uh, Mr. Bay, uh, Um, glasses plus model doesn't equal smart. That's all I really need to say. Glasses plus model doesn't equal smart. Um, Another thing, Mr. Bay, um, I'm curious. Did you see the movie 
middle school, the worst years of my life and think, uh, boy, the main girl is really sexy. Uh, especially in the scene here where they, I mentioned in my review of that movie, they kind of over-sexualized her. Uh, and she was, uh, I don't even know how old at the time. The movie is what, one, two years ago. Uh, she's 16 now, but in your movie, she's 14. Um, yet we got her in shirts that show cleavage and things like that and running scenes, of course, because you love girls running, don't you, Mr. Bay? Um, Mr. Bay, uh, over-sexualizing underage boys and girls, especially girls, is f***ing creepy. You need to stop it. You've got a problem. Hey, one good thing, we finally find out what happened to Sam Witwicky, kinda. Uh, we see a picture of him, and I'm wondering if this is a dig from Michael Bay. I don't know if they had a falling out. I don't know if that's why he wasn't in the fourth movie. I don't know. I never heard anything about that. But we see a picture of him, and he looks like he went bonkers. And, you know, given the problems that Shia LaBeouf has had in real life, makes me wonder if... That was kind of a middle finger from Bay to him. Maybe. I'm willing to bet the answer is yes. This movie steals plot devices from movies like Thor, the science equals magic thing, and Suicide Squad. The Decepticons are introduced, you know, one character by one character with their names flashing up on the screen. We get little intro things. There's nothing original here. It just takes stuff from other things and... Honestly, he doesn't do it even as well as Suicide Squad did and that movie wasn't that great. The plot is a f***ing stupid mess. And lastly, just about it being a movie, there is no way in hell that the Transformers could have hidden on Earth that long and not been known. And now we're going to talk about this movie as a fan. I am a big fan of Transformers. I grew up with them. I watched the cartoons. I love the 80s movie. Had the toys. And look, I know that that cartoon was created to sell toys. You know what? But at least they still had decent plots. And for the most part, they introduced new characters uh, for good reasons, other than to just sell toys. They gave them mostly good purposes for being there, except those stupid headmasters. Those things were dumb. But anyway, you know, as a fan, I'm not going to get mad. I'm tired of getting mad at these movies, and I'm just not going to get mad anymore. For fans of Megatron and Optimus Prime and some of the others, you know... They're not in the movie that much. In a movie called Transformers, you know, Optimus Prime is seen a couple times before the last act. That's it. Megatron's seen near the first of the movie and then near the end, and he's really not that important. Um, he's there for, like, one big battle, and that's it. That's it. If you're expecting to see a lot of Optimus Prime, you love Optimus Prime? Well, tough. You don't get a lot of him in it. And... You know, the whole thing, you've seen the commercials, you know, you see him fighting Bumblebee in the commercials. The whole thing about him being the villain, what a waste. He's used, he's a villain for like 10 minutes. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, forgive me, I'm Prime. You know, snap out of it, Prime, okay. You know, it, it's just really dumb and the plot's really stupid. The reason he's the villain, the reason he turns good again. You're talking about... Like I said, him as a villain's like 10 minutes and then he's there for the last act and all of a sudden he's so important at the end even though you barely saw him in the whole movie. Honestly, the main focus is Bumblebee, which honestly I didn't have a problem with. Uh, the thing is, they show a tease for what's probably going to be the Bumblebee solo movie. And then let's just put it this way. If this movie looks... I mean, that part of the movie's cool. I like that part of the movie. It was like one quick scene. But if... The movie's not directed by Michael Bay. You know, get a competent director behind it, a competent writer behind it. Um, that movie might not be that bad. And if Bumblebee's that focus of that movie, you know, that's cool if they do it right. I mean, it's this whole World War I thing. And, you know, I love the idea of, you know, it's just kind of like you see, you know, you got a superhero in that kind of, in World War One or World War Two. A Bumblebee period piece sounds kind of cool. Just don't let Michael Bay touch the f***ing thing. For fans of the anime series, the Quintessons are finally introduced, sort of. Um, let's just put it this way. Um, the thing that's, it's not a Quintesson, but it's called Quintessa. Uh, Quintessa was not a character in Transformers. Quintessa was the, uh, I think it's like the group of planets that the Quintessons are on. Um, we don't get the face changey thing. It looks, you know, it's, it's like a girl Transformer, basically. Um, think of, uh, that AI character from Halo in a way, 
but with like a weird lower body. Um, that's about what it is. It's kind of generic. Uh, and, you know, it's not a very good villain, really. There's no real good villains in this. Except maybe Megatron, who's in it for 10 minutes. You know, but yeah. So technically we got the Quintessons. Kind of sucked. But not going to get mad about it, though. Fans of Dinobots, don't rejoice. Grimlock's in this movie for like five minutes. And guess what? He's a big, dumb puppy now. Yeah. Big, dumb puppy. Don't, you know, put that car down, Grimlock. But yeah, you're, he's a big, dumb dog now. And he's in it for less than five minutes. So I thought they did Dinobots bad the last time. But I'm not going to get mad about it, though. Hey, remember in the last movie when Megatron was technically turned into Galvatron and we had that thing with the weird transformations and humans can create Transformers, that Transformium thing? Yeah, doesn't get mentioned again. Honestly, not a bad thing. I kind of want to like them to explain the whole Galvatron thing. Uh, but the Transformium being gone, that's not terrible. Not saying it improved the movie, but it not being there is okay with me. <laughs> Guess who's the last night? Nope, not him. Nope, not him. Nope, not him. Yeah, him. What? No. What? Yes. Yeah, Marky Mark's the last knight. Of course it's a human character. Couldn't couldn't have been couldn't have been Optimus Prime. Couldn't even have been Bumblebee or even Megatron or someone that you know. No. Had to be the human character because what I want out of my Transformers movies is human characters being the important focus of them. But I'm not going to get mad about it. So finally, after five movies, they introduced one of my favorite characters, Hot Rod. And of course they f***ed it up. You know what? For some reason, he's French now. And that's the joke. He's, he's a French Transformer with a thick French accent that nobody can understand. Judd Nelson would be disappointed, but I'm not going to get mad about it, though. Though there is a ton more to hate about this movie uh, as a fan, I'm going to talk about the this last thing. It's, it's the worst offense of everything. Um, Unicron is in this movie, technically. Um, you know, we've seen the trailers, and you see that the big planet spreading out and you think, you know, it looks like it's going to devour earth. Um, and you thought, wow, it must be Unicron. And then they show what ends up being Quintessa. And you think maybe that's the voice of Unicron, you know, kind of like to do with Thanos or someone else kind of speaks for him until he decides to speak himself. Uh, but no, that's not the case. The planet you see spreading out is Cybertron. Okay. That's fine. Okay, Cybertron, I thought maybe they were going to turn Cybertron into Unicron, but oh no. It gets worse than that. And as a fan, <laughs> yeah, okay, look. Orson Welles is dead. Okay, I understand you can't get Orson Welles to voice a new Unicron because he's gone. Fine, I thought maybe that's why they're doing the voice. And of course, like I said, it did not end up being Unicron. You know what's Unicron in this movie? You really want to know? Earth is Unicron. Earth is Unicron. Michael Bay, you f***ing piece of sh**. And I don't understand how these movies make any money you Ugh. i'm calm i'm calm look first of all having earth is unicron is stupid there's no way it could make sense see the main plot of this movie Cybertron needs to destroy Unicron to steal his power so they can survive, okay? But it destroys Earth. Technically destroying Unicron. And yes, Unicron is there because there's horns coming out of the planet. And that kind of makes sense in a stupid way. 
But Okay, Unicron I said was technically in this movie. Yeah. You know how the trailers for this movie keep saying it's like the last chapter or whatever, the final battle or whatever they're saying? Yeah, it's not. There's going to be another movie, and I'm not just talking about the Bumblebee movie. I'm talking about whatever this stupid franchise is going to do next. I don't get it. I don't understand what you're doing. I didn't think it could get any dumber. I thought that part four, I was like, man, there's no way they could top the stupidity of this movie. You know, part three was the only one that got the Transformers mostly right. And that was it. The rest of the movies hasn't hardly gotten anything good and anything right. So Unicron is Earth. How are you going to destroy Unicron? Or is Unicron going to be a good guy, a good guy Transformer? That makes no sense. None of it makes any sense unless they do something stupid. I'm going to predict this now. You know how Transformers in these movies can move their essence somehow or steal essence from other things and turn themselves into them? Like, you know, kind of how Bumblebee becomes a newer Camaro every movie somehow. Or Optimus Prime in the third one or the fourth one turns from a crappy semi to a good semi again. Had to have those flames again. Um, I have a feeling that Unicron is going to do that somehow to Cybertron. Um, I guess that makes sense. But Cybertron still had to be destroyed. Which, of course, the whole thing is, well, we're home now, says Optimus Prime. You know, we get to call Earth home. Well, you're definitely going to call it, have to call Earth home because I'm calling it. That's probably what the next movie is going to be. It's going to be Unicron becomes Cybertron and basically tries to do the same thing. Tries to just destroy Earth. That, that's all I can really see. Um, it really makes no sense, and especially as a fan, it's stupid. But I think that's what they're going to do. Hooray, that's dumb. Look, that's about all I'm going to say. I mean, I knew this movie was going to suck, and it did. I didn't know how much it was going to suck. And, you know, I joke about being mad. They're just dumb now. As a fan, they still have never topped the 80s movie. The movie still holds up. I watched it not too long ago. I mean, yes, there's little bitty mistakes here and there. Yes, some of it's goofy, but it's based on the cartoon and the cartoon characters. But still, that movie is got adult themes it's got kids themes it's got a little bit of something for everybody um it's still a great movie it has great characters even i mean they they destroy most of your older characters to introduce new ones and yes i know that's to introduce new toys but at least they made them cool characters hot rod is still one of the coolest characters ever and of course they effed him up in this movie you know i oh man I don't, I don't want to get mad about it anymore. I, I just can't. These movies are the same thing every time. They're, they got stupid plots. They ruin great characters. I had no hope for this movie. And other than it was worse than I thought it was going to be, that's all I can really say about it. Of course, people are going to go see it because some people, for some reason, enjoy the stupidity. You know, there's a difference between a popcorn movie and a burnt popcorn movie. And honestly... You know, there ain't nothing but black kernels, you know, in your popcorn for this one. You know, this one's just not even fun. The jokes don't work. The characters are stupid or underused. Other than the little bit of Bumblebee stuff promoting another movie, there's really not much here. The human characters are useless. Optimus Prime is barely used. Megatron definitely barely used. Anything you like... Especially as a fan, it's it's not there, and there's no point. There's no point anymore to watching these. I was talking with some buddies the other day. Honestly, if I didn't do this as a job, which by the third one I was, I would have quit after the second one. I just would not have watched them. And then if someone saw it and said, you know, they really turned it around, then I would check it out. But I would have gave up after the second one. I probably would have watched the third one because I heard it was good. But I had seen it, and like I said, I like the robots in it. It doesn't save it. But these movies continually get dumber. They're insulting. They do creepy stuff, like I said, like sexualizing an underage girl. It's just... 
you know, Michael Bay is capable of making decent movies. That that 13 Soldiers of Benghazi movie, I can't remember exactly what it was called. Uh, Bad Boys is okay. The Rock is great. But he's just gotten lazy. And whereas in, I mean, some of these movies have okay visuals, they don't improve. You don't improve your characters. You don't, It's not an improvement. And... Like I said, if this wasn't my job, if this wasn't something I love doing, I wouldn't watch them anymore. If I if I did not do this, I would not watch these movies anymore. Because they're just not worth it. Again, just watch the 84 version. You know, it has some adult themes. It has kids themes, kids humor, adult humor. Um... It just has a little something for everybody. It has great characters. And yes, they killed off a bunch of characters to bring new characters in just so they could sell toys. But at least they brought us some cool characters. Some fun characters to enjoy that you'd want to buy those toys. The characters in this new movie suck. And, you know, this movie to this day, I'm, I'm not too ashamed to admit, this is the first, the 84 Transformers was the first movie that I ever cried at. I was like six or seven when that movie happened. And... Man, I bawled my eyes out when Optimus Prime died. I was shocked when the other Autobots died at the beginning. But then they killed Optimus Prime. It's like, whoa. You know, I, I bawled my little eyes out that day. And now I love that movie because I get the theme. I mean, yeah, they brought him back in the cartoon. But that moment when you see him die for the first time, you don't think it's going to happen because, man, he's Optimus Prime. He's, he's the shit, You know? And then he dies. And then, of course, you know, uh, Hot Rod gets to become Rodimus and become the new leader at least for a while and then they have a theme in the cartoon where he doesn't feel he can live up to optimus prime and really he can't so you know they find a way to bring optimus back that's a great story these movies just don't have any of that so yeah if you're going to do anything find a copy of the 84 version it's still amazing that's enough for today as always thank you so much for watching what do you think of these movies and what did you think of transformers the last night do you like these movies do you hate these movies feel free to comment on it down in the section below but remember it's only just one guy's opinion i'm gino reynolds from the real gino transform and roll out